Yesterday, on Holocaust Memorial Day, an Arab terrorist walked up to a car and opened fire point-blank on two Jewish men returning from the morning prayers. In a historic visit, the Crown Prince of Iran came to Israel to show his support for the Jewish people during these hard times. In response to the horrific terror attack that happened during Passover, the D family is now building three legacies in memory of their lost family members. I'm Justin, and this is The Israel Guys. Welcome to the Israel Guys, where we believe that in a world of Jew hatred and anti-Israel propaganda, you should have a direct connection to the land and people of Israel. Welcome back to the show, guys. You know what to do. Make sure, first off, to subscribe to our channel. Also, like and share our content um, so we can reach more people with the truth of what is actually happening here in Israel. That's our mission here at the Israel Guys, especially uh, in the world today. There's a lot of propaganda, fake news coming out about Israel. Also, make sure to go check us out on our uh, other social media platforms. We're on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Uh, It would really help us out. We would really appreciate it if you go give us a follow there. So yesterday was Holocaust Memorial Day, and an Arab terrorist had the audacity on the day that the Jewish people are mourning the loss of 6 million innocent Jewish souls who were murdered in the Holocaust. On this day, an Arab terrorist had the audacity to go up, uh, to go up to a car, and open fire point blank on two Jewish men who were uh, simply returning from the morning prayers. It was two uh, ultra orthodox men who were returning from the morning prayers. This happened in the Sham- Shimon Hatzadik neighborhood, which is in East Jerusalem, um, otherwise known as Sheikh Jarrah. But as as I said before, two Jewish men were on their way back from the um, morning prayers at synagogue. They, uh, they were driving in their car, and a terrorist walked up to them and opened fire on them point blank. As you can see in this video, this uh, guy had the audacity just to walk straight up to the uh, vehicle here and open fire point blank. Uh, the two men who were injured, they were uh, evacuated to the hospital in moderate condition. One of the first paramedics who was on the scene, uh, first off, he said, He said this, quote, we were quickly on scene with large numbers of MDA uh, teams, which stands for Magen David Adom. One of the victims was lying on the street and the other was walking nearby. They were fully conscious with bullet wounds to their upper bodies. We provided primary medical treatment, stopped the bleeding, placed bandages and gave medications and evacuated them in MDA MICUs, two hospitals in moderate condition and fully conscious. So they were uh, conscious, but they were in moderate condition when they were evacuated to two separate hospitals. And as of this morning, thank God, um, both of the victims are doing better. One of them, his name is Rabbi Jacob Ben Panina Moses. He was taken to the Hadassah Mount Scopus Hospital. Uh, He had a gunshot wound in his chest, and it was actually a crazy miracle that he's alive today. So at the hospital, he was operated on by a senior professor, Haggai Maze. He is director of the surgery department at Hadassah, and he removed the bullet from the guy's chest. But during the surgery, it would, as it was found that it was a crazy miracle that this guy is still alive because the bullet had just barely, barely missed this guy's heart. So crazy miracle that happened. Rabbi Jacob said this. He said, quote, it was a real, real miracle that could have ended, heaven forbid, in a tragic way. Also, at the Shari Zedek Hospital, the other man who was injured, Rabbi Moshe Yosef Ben Malka Haas, he successfully underwent surgery, which lasted for three hours. Um, afterwards, he regained consciousness, and praise God, he will be uh, soon moved to the recovery ward. And also... In good news, I uh, just breaking news as of this morning, there was a pre-dawn operation this morning. The IDF, they were in cooperation with several uh, special forces, police units and such. They went into Nablus uh, or Shechem. They went into Nablus and they were able to find the terrorist uh, who committed this attack. Um, they caught him and then during the interrogation, the man admitted to carrying out this terrorist attack. The IDF uh, put out something on Twitter uh, they put it in Hebrew, so this is Google translated. They said this, 
said, quote, in less than 24 hours, the terrorist who carried out the shooting attack in Jerusalem was arrested. It was allowed to be published that in a joint operation, soldiers of the Israeli Defense Forces and the IDF, under the intelligence guidance of the Shin Bet, operated tonight in the city of Nablus in the Samaria Brigade and arrested within a few minutes the suspect of yesterday's shooting attack in which two Israeli civilians were injured. The terrorist was found to be a teenager from the Oscar refugee camp. So, thank God, the terrorist was caught, brought to justice, and both of the victims are on their way to recovery. They're doing much better, but continue to pray for their full recovery and um, for their full health. In some other news, the Iranian crown prince, Reza Pahlavi, he is here on a visit right now to Israel. So basically, he's the last, uh, he is the son of the last Shah of Iran and Basically, he's been in exile for the last 40 years since the fall of the uh, or since the dictatorship has taken over the Iran. And now it's a horrible, oppressive regime in Iran. Uh, this is from Arut Sheva. They said this, quote, with the um, the reason that the crown prince is here in Israel, he's visiting Israel in this historic move. Uh, He is here, quote, with the aim of expressing solidarity with the citizens of Israel in light of the attacks by terrorist organizations operating under the auspices of Iran, renewing the relationship between the nations and building an economic relationship with a focus on water technologies. In addition, to honor the victims of the Holocaust as part of Holocaust Martyrs and Heroes Remembrance Day events and to denounce the anti-Semitism and Holocaust denial of the Iranian regime. Um, So... The crown prince, he att- he did lots of things, He but one of the things that he did while he was here, uh, he attended the Holocaust Memorial event there at Yad Vashem. Here's a short clip from I-24 for news of something that he said right after the event. I thought it was really cool, so we'll play that video right here. It's always been uh, my goal to tell the whole world that what you hear from the Iranian regime is not what the Iranian people actually believe. This regime does not represent the Iranian people. My compatriots are proud of their history, a history that dates back 2,500 years when Cyrus the Great helped free Jewish slaves and helped rebuild their temples. It's a biblical relationship that our two countries have had over centuries. And today, when we have a regime that denies that the Holocaust ever occurred, it was my duty to be here representing my fellow compatriots to honor the victims of the Holocaust and pay my respects to this nation and its people. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Also yesterday, him and his wife, they went to the Western Wall and they stood there for a full for the full minute of silence uh, when the siren went off and the whole country came to a stop to remember the six million Jews who were killed in the Holocaust. He was there standing with the people of Israel at the Western Wall for that moment of silence. They also prayed at the Western Wall. Um, he tweeted this out along with photos um, of them praying at the wall. I thought this tweet that he, uh, he wrote was really cool. He said this. So said Cyrus, the king of Persia. All the kingdoms of the earth, the Lord God of the heavens delivered to me, and he commanded me to build him a house in Jerusalem, which is in Judea. 2,500 years ago, Cyrus the Great liberated the Jewish people from captivity and helped them rebuild their temple in Jerusalem. It is with profound awe that I visit the western wall of that temple and pray for the day when the good people of Iran and Israel can renew our historic friendship. Really great to see this support and friendship from this guy, even though he's a Muslim. He's coming uh, to Israel during these rough times, uh, even when terrorism is more rampant, has been more rampant in Israel in the past few weeks. He's coming to show his support, and he was even here during Holocaust Memorial Day uh, to stand against the Iranian regime because, you know, the leaders of the Iranian regime, they are actually Holocaust deniers, and they're very... Um, anti-Semitic people, so he's going against that. He's showing his support for the Jewish people, and he is um, remembering the fallen in the Holocaust. It's really great to see this here. If you're a young person aged 18 to 35, the land of Israel needs you. More specifically, Israel's biblical heartland needs you. For 2,000 years, it has lain desolate, but today it's coming back to life. If you're at a place in your life where you're looking for direction, need a break, refocus, hear from God, meet other believers like yourself and grow in your spiritual walk, then I have the perfect opportunity for you. 
This year, we're hosting a special six-week volunteer program specifically designed for young people. The special ops trip will be a perfect mix between a volunteer program, Israel experience, and a discipleship program. We'll be working long hours in Israel's hot and dry climate. We'll be planting thousands of trees. We'll be meeting the pioneers of Judea and Samaria and creating adventure-filled experiences that we don't do on any other trip. If you're ready to serve Israel's people in the biblical heartland and watch your faith grow and come alive, the Special Ops program this June and July is perfect for you. To find out more, go to serveisrael.com slash volunteer or click the link in the description below. So when there are terrorist attacks in Israel, yes, the Jewish people, they will do everything they can to hunt down this, to hunt down the terrorist who committed the horrible attack and bring him to justice. But they will not just go into Palestinian cities and kill innocent Palestinians in revenge um, like the Arabs do. Lots of times, if one of them is um, killed, the Jewish people put a focus on life. So when someone is killed, they will build a community in remembrance of the person who was killed, or they will start a school in remembrance uh, of the murdered person. Their focus is on life. So the D family, they are creating three separate legacies uh, for the memories of the of Lucy, Maya, and Rena D, who were murdered at the beginning of Passover in the horrific terror attack. I'm going to read this from Arut Sheva about what they are doing um, for what the legacies that they are creating in memory of these um, three people who are killed. It says this, their first project is the establishment of a home for the Efrat branch of the Ezra youth movement and Efrat in memory of Rena, who is an active and significant counselor at the Ezra branch. The family noted that Rena was saddened by the fact that the community does not have a building for the branch and its operations take place in a public space. She had already begun promoting the plans for the branch building in her life. The family intends to make that dream come true. Maya will be remembered by the establishment of a nature oasis and natural spring in recognition of her love for both nature and water. According to Leo D., the meaning of the name Maya is from God. Maya was close to nature and she loved natural springs, so it is so so it is natural that a spring will be built next to her house that that she loved so much. A community event hall and venue will be built in memory of Lucy, who is so involved and significant in the community. The the family said, quote, Lucy always wanted everyone to be happy. There's no place more appropriate than a hall of joy to fulfill Lucy's life mission that everyone should be happy. Uh, the family also put it put out a statement that said, quote, over the past two weeks, many have asked how they can help the family. Now that the seven days are almost over, my answer is clear. Join us and take part as ambassadors and partners in the campaign. This is our time. After we cried together, we hurt together, we embraced together. Together we will build, remember, remind, and strengthen. So it's amazing to uh, see the strength of this family to see them coming together to build legacies for their lost loved ones. Even in these hurting times, they're focusing on life and they're focusing on building up the land of Israel. Guys, make sure and check out our special ops program. It's coming up very soon. Right now, Israel needs you more than ever. The link will be in the description below, but make sure you go check that out or send to your friend um, who's maybe interested in coming to Israel. Uh, Make sure to subscribe, get the conversation going down below. Let us know your thoughts. Uh, Show your support for Israel in this time in the comments below. And as always, tune out the fake news and tune into what is actually happening in the land of Israel. We'll be back every Monday through Friday with your direct connection to the land and people of Israel.